All right, guys. So the leader that I chose to use during the event is this bad boy, Mecha Frieza. You all already know what he does. Unfortunately and fortunately, he's going to no longer really be used in the same fashion he was before because his effect was nerf. May 1st, he won't be able to be played the way he was. Um, his flip side, you guys already know. So we're just going to go down through the deck profile. So I used Frieza. This is the top 16 mat that I made. Um, I tried doing my best. I ended up losing to a Zeno two games. Uh, Danny Hype luck sacked me both games, game one and game three. You guys will be able to see that in the stream um, or in the YouTube video when Dusty uh, from Kitchen Table Meta posts it up. But anyways, we're going to go through our extra cards. I ran four Father and Son Kamehameha. So this card was something that I came up with. I was test playing with friends and uh, my girlfriend. And uh, I just thought about different cards that could be utilized by Frieza. At the end of the day, this leader's effect uses free extra cards if they cost one. And on the flip side, of course, it reduces it by two instead. So you could use cards like Mafuba and uh, other individual cards that cost two. So with that being said, I was like, oh, well, let me just take a look at what's in the format. And I saw this card. I was like, oh, this card was played a lot during the cell format where players would just use it like in Vegeta decks or in other decks that was trying to compete with the cell chain. They would try to pop the cell chain with this card. And I was like, wow, that's actually pretty good. Well, let's see this format. Frieza can use it for free and it can help awaken him to this side. And I can get rid of threats on the board. If I'm playing monkeys, I could pop their monkeys. If I'm playing against uh, before King comes out, if I'm playing against cell, I can destroy their cell chain. Uh, and of course, if I'm playing against veggies, I can literally pop their Kabas and their Khalifas and their Kales on the right turn marker. So if they play it on two, I could pop them on two. So it was a good tool just to sit back and just let them do what they need to do. And I just popped them off the board. The next extra card I ran is the most popular, Planet Vegeta. It's an extremely good card, very strong. It allows you just to search for your pieces and help you awaken. That's all it does. Uh, moving on, Manaka. It's a draw tool card. It gives your leader double strike. And it also allows you to remove a card from your life if you choose to use it for free and help you awaken to this side. And it also nets you a draw. So it's pretty nice. It's good filter. These cards I'm primarily used for filter, just like March of the Great Apes is another powerful filter card. This card allows you to put in play your monkeys, which the deck is an ape deck, so you could put all your four drops or less on the board, and you draw two cards, and it helps you awaken. That's the key part of the deck, so you'll notice the trend. The last part of the extra card lineup is Cold Bloodlust. I ran three this time around. I was thinking about running four, but three seemed like the nice number and it worked out perfectly fine. There were a lot of games that I actually had a cyborg Cold Bloodlust out. And there were a few games that I cyborged the one I had in my cyborg, which is actually the last card that is in there. But moving forward, uh, we will move on to the monkeys. So we have four Bardock's Will of Iron. He's basically a generic double strike monkey that's 20k and a blocker. That's all he's used for. He's uh, This deck was designed to use the strongest apes so I can constantly keep them on the board to put pressure on my opponent and utilize blockers. That was the point of the deck. The next uh, major card of the deck and probably the most essential card outside of King Vegeta is my boy Vegeta, Great Ape Prince Vegeta. So you guys already know, this is the only monkey that actually has critical, so he can deny your opponent resources. And not only that, but he also, when he's put into play or when you use him as a combo piece, you literally can look up to the top three cards of your deck and fetch for one of your monkeys and add it to your hand, any monkey. So that's really crucial. And then you just pitch a card in order to add it to your hand. The next card is Hidden Power Great Ape Tora. Again, just a monkey for 20k stats, a blocker, and that's all it's really used for. It does have a really nice, interesting effect, but it never went off in the entire event. So it's not something that's super relevant. Maybe in the future when uh, this format starts shifting uh, elsewhere, you will see cards like this actually put in work. 
Uh, when you combo during your turn with this card, if you have a Torah on the board, you simply evolve over this card after the combo step. And what it does is it KOs a card on your opponent's side of the board rested. So it's very good. It uh, allows you to clear the board. It allows you to focus on your opponent's leader or other battle cards while still getting rid of pesky cards that you need a, can't deal with. And then last but not least out of the monkeys, we have absolute defense grade ape King Vegeta. The king. The king. All right, guys. This is the reason of playing the deck. Gonna be quite frank with you. If this wasn't a card, I wouldn't have played this deck. I would have probably played Veggies. This card gives your whole board of monkeys, including Yellow Saiyans, barrier. That's the start off. That's just like the, the cake on the icing or the icing on the cake. And it's just amazing to have a board of guys that cannot be affected by your opponent's effects other than a few cards like Zeno, which I will get into that because that is the card that I lost to um, in top 16. Furthermore, what's so amazing about this card is not only he gives your whole board barrier because of the design of this deck, but he also allows you to reduce the cost of every card in your hand, every Saiyan card in your hand by one. Which that means is this little cost on the side where it, it literally costs one, as you can see right here, it costs one to combo. This becomes a zero. Yes, guys, a zero, which means is when you have this bad boy in play, you can combo all of these bad boys out for free without no energy at all. And it's Saiyans, not just monkeys. Now we're going to go to the core of the deck, essentially, which is pretty much what makes the deck go. We have four unwavering Shuigash. Now, this card is simply nuts it's the best super combo in the game as of yet so expect this card to see a lot more play now you guys already know it's gonna hit off a saiyan that costs three or less in your hand and you can put it into play and get all the autos that are attached with it but what he's used for is primarily the these cards coming up which is king Vegeta. this man is broken um, and why he's broken is because he literally, when he's put into play, he searches for all, any ape in your deck and add it to your hand. So it's ridiculous because you search for whatever ape you need, add it to your hand, which primarily is this card. If you don't have this card in your hand, you're going to search for it with this card. If you already have this card in your hand, the next card you will want to search for just to efficiently play the deck is this card. Reason being... When you combo with it or you play it, you can also fetch for more monkeys. So you want to keep the deck going. You want to keep your deck deck thinning and just make the most efficient plays you can, which I'm going to go through some of the plays I made in the tournament, which made my, my stay really good. And that's why I was able to perform well enough. Not as well as I wanted to, but well enough. The next card we're going to talk about is Explosive Spirit Sun Goku. I ran four of these bad boys. I noticed a lot of people were only running two or three. Four to me were essential because of Shui Gesh again, going back to this card. If I was ever in a pickle and my opponent was rushing me down, like for example, Veggies, Veggies were very relevant in this tournament and I played against quite a few of them. My opponents would try to rush me down before I can get this guy, this bad boy on the board. And if they would do that, I pretty much lose. I actually lost to a Veggie deck during Swiss rounds, which sucked. And then I lost to Danny Hype, which wasn't Veggies, but we'll get into that shortly. But um, his ability, as you guys may already know, he has barrier. He can, when he's put into play, you KO a card in rest mode, which is amazing because when your opponent attacks, what happens to your creature? It goes into rest mode, which is why he's used and he's able to pop your opponent's cards during the combo. As soon as they combo out their whole hand, you could just play that with Shrigesh and you're, you're free, as long as they don't have barrier or any indestructible effect. Next card that I played was... Unbreakable Super Saiyan Sun Goku. This was the last supporter piece of the deck. It's a free 10k boost. So not only I run Shugesh, but I have another free 10k boost. You pay for one in normal circumstances, but in this deck, you have King. Like I said earlier, King reduces the cost of all your Saiyan cards by one, which includes this card. And that card literally becomes a free 10k boost, as we already may know. And the last card of the deck is Scientist Fu. Scientist Fu 
didn't really help me that much, gonna be honest. Um, I could have left another Cold Bloodless in the deck, which is actually in my sideboard. But, um, you know, it was still okay. It, it worked. I was able to play it at two of my matches out of the whole event. So two games out of all the rounds that I played in. But um, it was still good to have. Uh, I would make that change where I would have cut him out completely since he is a one-of. And overall, this is the deck. Now, your ideal hand. Start off hand that you want because a few of you guys have told me before, hey, Anthony, show me what I should search for in my opening hand. What are some of my plays that I should make? So we're going to go through that. Start off hand, you want to have extra cards, okay? Now, what you want to preferably have in your opening hand is one march, which I'm going to put it here. One march. One to two of these. one to two of these. Getting two and two, amazing. If you get four of these in your hand, amazing. Just minus without the Monakas. If you get four Monakas and the March, amazing. So any number of these, as long as you don't exceed more than four because you just wanna awaken, you don't wanna have a bunch of dead cards in your hand. Once you have more of these in your hand than this amount, you start to accumulate dead cards and it slows down the pace of your game. You end up using them for energy or you end up paying for them instead of using them for free. The whole point of this deck is to utilize cards for free. Now, uh, the last card you can have in your hand is ideally a Shui Gesh. So having this type of hand and a Shui Gesh, perfect. Because what you'll do is, opening hand, you'll use your Planet Vegetas. You'll first use Manaka, draw into whatever you have, see what you already have in your hand. Then you start searching for whatever pieces you're missing. So ideally, you want to use your Planet Vegeta, search for the King, make sure you have King in play. And if you're going against Veggies, you'll use your other Planet Vegeta to search for Kid Goku. Because you want to make sure that you're protected from your opponent just going all out and rushing you before you can establish your main card of the deck on the board, which is King. So that's what you want to do during gameplay. Now, if you are on the play, this is like go, you going first. So if you're going first, this is your ideal hand. If you're going second, this is what you might, this is what you will consider to have is similar. You'll have your planets over the Manakas. You would actually want to have these. So swapping out these cards is this instead. And as you can see, what that does is this card, like I said, it was used during the cell chain during previous formats, and this card allows you to pop their cards on board. So when you don't go first, it's not so bad because you can actually utilize this to clear out your opponent's board and awaken. And guys, always remember, this was asked several times in the tournament. This one card had so many people calling judge, and the head judge will get a laugh out of this. This card can still be played when you do when your opponent does not have a target in play, meaning your opponent can have no creatures in board or no characters that can be targeted, and you can still play this card for free using Freeze's effect because cost comes first. In this game, you always pay cost. Then you apply the effect if it's applicable. But this is the ideal hand. Now we're going to move up to the sideboard since we already went through this. So... Just go right here, put the cards right back in place, and we're going to go onto the sideboard. Now, the sideboard is going to be shown here. For starters, I had the one cold bloodlust. I'll move it here so we don't keep things complicated. I sideboarded the bloodlust in the event I was going against a cell chain deck, uh, which I didn't the whole day. Or if I was going against veggies, believe it or not, veggies are annoying and you need to stop their Kaba because once their Kaba goes off, they're going to have a huge turn where they could push and start dropping kills for free and the whole deck becomes free and it's just like, oh God, leave me alone. That's what happens. The next card I sideboarded was also against veggies, Mass Saiyan, the Mysterious Warrior. As you may already know, he's Overwhelm 5 and you co he cost 1. When he comes into play, he can KO up to f all your opponent's uh, battle cards of 5 or less. Cost of 5 or less, except for blockers. The veggie stuff, they're really small cards, they're cheap, so he can KO them very cheaply. You can literally get rid of almost your, your, almost your opponent's entire board with just this one card, just dropping one of these. The next card I sideboarded was Hidden Power Grade 8 Fasha. Now, 
This card wasn't that great. I never sideboarded it. Uh, well, actually, no. I sideboarded it against one person, and I never saw it. So it wasn't that effective, but the whole logic to it was that if I'm playing against the ape matchup, I wanted to have more bodies on board than they did. So I would have more apes that I can put in play via Shuigesh. So if I needed to, I could Shuigesh into a Fasha into play, guard one of their attacks, and still have a blocker or an attacker on my side. And with, of course... Planet Vegeta, I can restand my guys. So that was the thought process of having this in there. Now, moving along, we had four surprise attack King Vegetas. Um, let's take that one out. We'll go to that later. This card was used against primarily the mirror match, only against apes. So notice how this portion is against apes, this portion is against veggies. Now, what this did was as you guys may already know, when you play it, you can give your battle card plus 10k and give your battle card revenge. Since most of your guys in this deck have blocker, including the Goku, you can give your blockers revenge and a plus 10k so they can stay alive and kill your opponent's creatures, which is super effective against the mirror match and it will hurt them. The next card I ran, Two Sun Goten. Never sideboarded it in, but it was used for rogue decks or decks like, again, apes. If I felt like their play, if I felt like my opponent was constantly using Sun Goten on the, de uh, using um, Shui Gesh into King Vegeta on the defense, and I saw that in their play style, I would sideboard this because I would be like, oh, you used that on your turn, on my turn? Cool, I'll pop you. I'll swing out and pop you. Or I would just use my signature card, Father and Son Kamehameha, and pop them. But this was in the main board. Last but not least, I ran four Haru Haru. And believe it or not, guys, I didn't come clutch at all. I, it was made in the event I played against Cell or any green leaders. I played against no green leaders the entire event. I only played against one Mass Saiyan and one SS3 Goku, which was Danny Hype in top 16. Everyone else were apes, 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 veggies, 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 freezer, freezer, freezer. That's all I saw in the entire event. So, you know, the format was fun, but yes, it needed to go because there weren't that many, there wasn't much diversity in it, and it could be a little annoying playing against the mirror match or against veggies every single game. Um, overall, uh, I want to, you know, congratulate all the players that showed up in San Jose. Thank you for making this a terrific and grand event. I mean, we had 500 players. That's no joke. This game is growing. It's getting big. And Bandai has a lot in store for us. We spoke to a, a few of the, we spoke to one of the Bandai representatives and we got a few little tad bit of details, which I might share in future videos. But for the most part, this game has a lot of cool stuff going for it. And overall, you know, you guys are what makes the game popular. You know, if you guys didn't come to the event, the event wouldn't have been the biggest regional. Um, congratulations to my teammate, Eon Hill. Um, the Hill uh, twins, they did very well. Eric missed top cut. He ended up going 6-3 in the event, which was unfortunate, but still a good player, still a solid player. Um, he has three tops under his belt, two top eights and a top 16. And now Eon Hill, he broke out of the top 32 bracket and won. He was only barely making it in, and he just went all full throttle. He had a dream, and that was his destiny to win the event, I guess. Um, so it was phenomenal. And, um, you know, me, I, I was kicking ass, but I ended up uh, losing to Danny Hype. Uh, you'll see it on stream. Game one, he top deck into the last piece he needed, which was the combination he needs to beat me. It's having a bad ring, a yellow card in hand. He needs Zeno. He needs Trunks, um, the uh, chain attack Trunks, and that's how he can win. And he needs the proper energy on board, which is one yellow, three red, and one one whatever, whatever color else. Um, and he had that game one. And I had the bloodlust, but he stopped me. Then game two, I destroyed him. It was just like, nope, you're not. I went first this time around, which he went first last game. Had I would have went first, he would have lost the game. So a lot of the games went based on kind of just a roll of the die and a little bit more of a beneficial luck factor. Um, game two, again, like I said, I went through him. Uh, he wasn't able to bring out chain attack trunks on, on time, which is his only way of really beating me. Game three, 
Uh, he had one Zeno in the energy area. He, I believe, had one uh, Zeno discarded. And he had one Zeno left in life. I didn't know he had a Zeno left in life. He checked his deck. He saw, he looked for answers. He was a little, I saw his facial expression. He was a little down, like he felt like he was going to lose. Um, there was a turn on my on my turn. I was afraid of him dropping uh, Chain Attack Trunks into Zeno. Because I didn't know that information. Only he knew when he searched his deck with Planet Vegeta. Sure enough. When it came down to my uh, my turn, I attacked. I actually gave him the Zeno in hand. Believe it or not, one of my my final attack when he was at three life, he got the Zeno. Had he got any other card, he would have lost after his turn. He would have went on to his turn. He wouldn't have been able to do anything because I already had a secure board, and he would have just lost. So that was unfortunate. Zeno beat me. Um, Danny is a very good opponent, but he already knows it was luck that was on his side this time around. Um, but nevertheless, it was still a good experience. I made top 16. I wanted to go much further. In fact, me, on Eon, me and Eon, the plan was to play each other in the finals. Uh, we were getting there, but I couldn't deliver on my end because I got Zeno to death. I got erased. And, um, you know, overall, great tournament, good turnout. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me via Facebook or YouTube. You could just leave uh, your message in the comment section below. And as always, this channel is all about you.